Hi people, it's Titus here and welcome back to part 3 of our camera system prototype. In the last video we gave life to our static camera by creating a timeline and lerpy between two rotators to make our object swing left to right. In today's video we'll expand the blueprints code and make it track and target our player actor when it enters uh, the vision cone for the actual blueprint. So we'll go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how to implement this code into your own project. So going back into our um, blueprint, uh, in order to make this work, we're going to add some additional components. Um, the first one we're going to need is going to be a, some type of um, collision check. Um, so we'll probably use a collision or a capsule collision sphere. Uh, we basically need a way for when this thing is swinging around, um, if you have some type of collider, uh, in order to detect that, you know, that on collision event so you can fire off your code. Oops. So we will call this um, view trigger. And in the viewport, I am going to rotate this 90 degrees. And then I'm going to probably do maybe 300 and maybe 88. So that's going to be a pretty big collider. So I'll just move that in the front. The reason I added as a child of the camera component is because we're rotating our camera. So this will rotate uh, with the camera piece as well. Uh, one other thing I'll want to do is um, so I can see it in game, we can go down to the uh, hidden in game and uncheck that for now. Compile and save. And now when we hit play, you can see the uh, capsule colliders kind of moving around there. So now every time this capsule collider collides with an object, we can get information from what that object is. And depending on what that object is, we can fire off specific code. So you can use this for you know, a lot of different elements. Um, I also want to give a little bit more life to our camera. So I'm going to also add a spotlight. And I think there is, yeah, spotlight. So add that here. I'm going to move that up front. All right, and then I'm going to reduce it by half. I'm going to make it 2,500. Uh, cone angle, I'm going to go with a 30 uh, degree angle. And I'm going to go into the advanced section and I'm going to remove the inverse square fall off because I want this thing to be very bright. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. So now we got a little bit of a, kind of like a spotlight going around. Um, to improve the scene, I think I will go into our directional light and I'm gonna reduce our intensity to maybe one to make it a little bit darker. Um, and then I'm gonna go into our exponential height fog. And for the in scattering, I'm actually gonna set that from, you know, black to uh, like a, a gray or a white. Just to get some, some uh, something to, for the light to bounce off of, so I can kind of create a, you know, like a visible cone. So some around there looks good, and then I'm going to go down and enable the volumetric fog, and I'm going to maybe increase the value. I don't want to go too high. Actually, I think the defaults is probably okay. So now if we play that. Yeah, that's kind of the effect I'm looking for. Probably needs to be a little bit higher. So we can go into our blueprint, pop this up one. And yeah, that looks pretty good. That's looking more like a security camera. You can still see it's being captured on our render uh, target texture from earlier. Okay, so now we need to get this thing tracking the player. So let's go to the event graph. And um, this was our passive look code. In order to get it to track the, the actual player character, we're probably going to want to go off of the uh, event tick because that runs every frame. So we just do event tick. And then um, we're going to want to do a check. Um, we only want to break from this logic if the player target has actually been like seen, um, you know, where they actually trip. So we're going to create a, uh, another variable and we'll call it um, has target. 
and this is going to be of type boolean so a yes or a no so i'm going to drag off the event tick i'll do a branch and then on my branch i'm just going to drag my has target so it'll check if the uh, target variable is true if it is it'll run this code if it isn't it'll run this code so we are going to steal this so i'm actually going to disconnect these two pins and i need this down here now like so and the relative rotation is actually going to come off our false pin our execution pin here and then we are actually going to do another reference for our camera and instead of relative rotation we're actually going to do set world rotation and the reason we're going to have to do that is because this is basically going to be swapping from um, you know from the timeline uh, rotation uh, to actually moving towards the player target you know where the player actually is so the true pin will hook up here and then we're going to need to calculate these new rotation values uh, but because we broke our timeline, we're going to need to get a like a placeholder for that. So we're going to create another variable. So we'll call it um, last rotation. And that is going to be of type rotator. So now we can bring this up here where our set world, uh, our set relative location was. And we can instead do uh, set the variable. So we'll just pop that in there and plug that in there. All right, so we're not going to be able to finish the the uh, all the tick code uh, because we we need a reference to our player character, and we'll have to set up the collision code. But we can do a lot of it. Actually, we can probably do the majority of it. Um, so on the the bottom portion, we're going to be doing a um, rotation interpolation, so an R interp. So you can do R interp two. And then for the world rotation, we're actually going to do a vector interp2, or v interp2. And that's because we're going to be using a transform location from our, our player character. Because we can't use a can't really use the player's rotation to be able to get the line of sight. We're going to need to create a vector from that. So I'll kind of go over the math with you in a bit, though. Um, but let's get the original code working, because right now we kind of broke it. So if I hit play... It's not going to do anything. So, uh, we're going to want to get a reference to our camera. And then off our camera, we can get um, the relative rotation. And that is our old position, or, or, um, or basically it's the current position of the camera. So we can plug that into the current value here now the target rotation that's going to be coming from our timeline um, which the timeline is stored in the variable so that was the last rotation one so we can drag out here do a get and then we can just plug in our last rotation node here and we have a delta time because we're using tick tick will actually give us a delta second so we can actually plug that in right here And now we can plug this into our original set relative location. Now our world rotation still isn't gonna fire, but we're gonna need collision code for that anyways. But I believe if I did this right, our camera should be back to, nope, not yet. What did I miss? Oh, the interpolation speed. Oh, I plugged it into the wrong thing, so. Control into the delta seconds here. Our interpolation speed, that's gonna be how Quickly, it snaps uh, from the player character when it detects it um, back to the timeline. So I'm going to start um, about 0.5. I believe the lower the value, the slower it's going to turn, and the higher the value, the quicker it's going to snap. But we can play with these values later. So now if I hit play, we're back to how we had it. So that's good. All right, so now we can go back here. And we can get the base code set up for actually tracking the player. So we're gonna again get a reference to our camera. 
and we need a reference to our player, which that's the part we can't do yet. So uh, for the camera though, we're gonna need two pieces. We're gonna need a world rotation. So get world rotation. And then we will also need uh, world location. So get world location. From the rotation side, we can get the X vector. So get rotation X vector. And then we can plug that in to our current vector interpolation. The world rotation part down here, um, we're not gonna be able to complete it, but we can drag off and get a, what's called a unit direction. And that's a vector. And we're basically going to get the world location of the camera and then get the world location of the player. And we're gonna draw a line between those two references and that's gonna be our vector. And then from that translation, we can basically do a vector interp from our current translation to where the player is. So it'll move the, the camera into position uh, to where the player is. But we're not gonna affect the transform. We're gonna pull off this and instead uh, just get the rotation from the X vector because we don't wanna physically move the camera. Um, we just want to basically turn the camera and kind of point it to look at the, uh, the player. So we'll plug that up there. But the code is incomplete, so that's okay. I don't think it'll break anything because we don't have any collision anyways to actually trigger that. So nothing's going to happen with it yet. So let's go ahead and See if we can organize this a little bit better. Uh, we also will need a delta time for this guy as well. So I can drag off this little pin, plug in my delta time. And the interpolation speed for this one, I'm gonna try five. And I'll play with these a uh, little bit to maybe speed up the snappiness of how the camera pulls off the target um, and goes back to the timeline. So we'll kind of see how it looks. But yeah, um, let me see if I can organize this any better here. But okay, and we'll drag this one into there. So now let's, uh, we'll come back to this code. We gotta get a reference to our player. So let's, uh, on our, our view um, viewport, we can see uh, our camera system. We're gonna be getting a, um, a collision event off the view trigger. So you can highlight the view trigger here. And then if you right click, you can do a add event for the view trigger. Choose type collision. And this only works with context sensitive, so you'll need that checked. We're gonna do a begin and an end overlap. So we'll just go ahead and select the view trigger again, right click, add event, collision, and this time we'll do end overlap. All right, so from the, um, the begin overlap, we can just simply drag off the execution pin and do a cast to third person character. Um, the reason we're doing this one is because I am using the starter content and that is the name of the default pawn that I'm using. If you're using a different character, you'd use whatever blueprint name you're using for your character. I can plug in the other actor into the input object field here. And now on this guy right here, because I'm going to be referencing this player character a lot, I can just right click and promote it to a variable. And we can call this something like target actor. And that's the part that I needed to, to be able to complete um, the above code. Uh, but since we're here, we might as well set the has target. So this is where we can do a set and tell the, uh, the game that the has target uh, Boolean is now true because the, uh, the player walked into the, uh, the line of sight of the camera, the camera detected them. And if I go up here now, we can do a reference to our target actor and do a get. And then we can pull off this and you won't be able to do get world location because 
it won't really pull up correctly, but what you can do is get actor location. And that'll give you your, your vector. So we pull this into here. And just with that, um, that's gonna actually complete this code right here. So we can actually hold C, comment it out, and this is uh, camera de detection and follow, or, you know, basically the, the set of code that actually handles the, the camera looking for the player and stuff. And this is just the panning back and forth. But let's go ahead and on the um, end overlap, we're gonna reset the values. Um, so what you can do is you can basically drag off the, um, now if we can do has target, and we will set that to false. And then we can set the target actor to blank. So when you don't hook up anything into the target actor, it basically clears it, so there's nothing in there. And this one actually sets it. So that we can basically pull that value off and put it back on as we need it. Now we should probably put some um, branch checks in here, but let's see if the code actually functions. I think it, I don't think we actually really need it right now, but it's just good practice. So now, if the camera intercepts, it sees me, and then it's gonna try and track me. And if I can break its view, it's gonna go back to its timeline, and then kind of uh, persist. Now, if you wanted to play with the snappiness of the, uh, the camera feed, that's gonna be your interpolation speeds on your rotation and your vector. So like if I did, like if I did a 0.2, and then if I did this as a 0.5, I think it's gonna be very slow. I think the lower the number, the slower it is. Yeah, so it's going very slow between the values and it's going very slow to track me. So it's slow on the timeline and slow on go, uh, going to the actual player. So like if you do, um, putting this back up to uh, 0.5 and maybe do, let's do 10. Let's actually do one and 10. All right, this thing's gonna be zooming around. It's going pretty quick. And if it just looks over my way, bam, kind of locks in. So if you have an issue where you want your character to be able to run out and snap back, you know, that would be like the behavior you're looking to modify there. But I think my default values were actually pretty good. So I think I had this one at 0.5 and this one at 5. That worked pretty good. Uh, another thing you might do, uh, if you just want to have a bit, bit of fun, um, on the begin overlap, you can get a reference to your spotlight. You can drag off your spotlight and do maybe uh, set color. Oops. Set color. Drag that, and we can maybe make it really crazy red. And then on the um, end overlap, we can get another reference to our spotlight. And do set color. And then we'll just make it back to white. Or if you want to do green or kind of whatever you're doing. Adds a little bit of extra life to your, your project. But, you know, you have different options of how you ever want to do it. All right, people, in the spirit of keeping things short and simple, I'm going to cut it there um, and expand out the camera system in the next video. Uh, I want to add some interface code to trigger an alarm state that does various things in the level, like maybe open a door, uh, set an alarm light or something, or maybe play uh, music. Um, I also want to give a, the ability for the player to disable or destroy the camera, so we'll explore that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I hope you found this topic helpful. Uh, if so, please leave a like and a sub, and feel free to leave a, a comment on any future topics you want covered. I'm always open to new material, and as always, thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.